What's going on, everybody? I've got a little story that I'd like to share with you all today. It has to do with this post that went live a few days ago on the official forums detailing Kabam's, you know, balance goals going forward in the contest. Now, I've already dissected this post, so we're not going to be going through it all again, but there is one section here I'd like to read again. It says, we have recently expanded our balance design team and brought in a beloved member of the community who will be assisting Kabam John with all the balance stuff and yada, yada, yada. Now, at the time, they said, we won't reveal who that new team member is yet, but we'll let them do it themselves when they feel the time is right. And because they didn't say exactly who this individual was at the time, they just saw a member of the community, and people know that I have a strong desire to be a game developer myself, people were connecting the dots and kind of pointing the finger my direction, saying, hey, is, is that you? Are you now a Kabam employee? To which, of course, I responded, no, uh, it is not me. And then, of course, the next day on Twitter, Jay Nick uh, said the new balance designer that's referenced in the forum post is me. So there we go. Mystery solved. The uh, the member of the community uh, that is now assisting uh, Kabam John uh, is Jay Nick. But here's the thing, guys. I truly value not only honesty, but full transparency. You see, there, you know... I, when, I, when people ask me point blank, hey, is this you? All I really have to say is yes or no, and I'm being honest. So I was being fully honest with you guys when I said no. But transparency, it's about sharing more information than uh, what is required. Uh, and I'd like to do that today. Hopefully you guys appreciate it because I really don't have to be doing this. I could just keep this private to myself, but I don't like to do that. I like to, I like to fill you guys in, let you guys know what's going on. Uh, and in keeping with those values, uh, I did apply to work for Kabam. I applied for this very position right here to be part of the balance design team. Uh, the same position that uh, Janik was hired uh, for. Um, now, a few disclaimers before I get into the details of, you know, how the process went. Um... I was unaware of all the stuff in the post. I wasn't like faking a reaction or something like that uh, about the, you know, the rating system and this balance process and stuff like that. This was, this was all stuff that I was seeing for the first time as well. Um, second thing is that, uh, you know, balance, it, it's not just about champions. There's, you know, a little section here that really got mostly overlooked because it wasn't the focus of this post. Um, but it basically says that the new team member has had a hand in helping to plan the new rating system, as well as future Alliance War tactic updates and the next iteration of Karina's challenges. And I'm sure many more things going forward because, you know, when I interviewed for the position, I interviewed with six different uh, developers uh, working on Marvel Concerts of Champions, uh, all in different areas of the game. Um, cause that's what a balanced designer does. I mean, you know, I, I don't know exactly what the day to day, uh, you know, job entails for Kabam John, but I know in talking to John in the past that, you know, he, he, he touches nearly every aspect of the game. Um, you know, and just more help is needed basically. And that's, that's what the position was about is just, uh, it's more help is needed essentially. Right. Um, for all areas of the game, which is something that I, I think is pretty obvious. Maybe it's obvious because I, you know, I, I make YouTube videos and because I understand that, you know, a very small percentage of the videos I make are actually videos that like I'm super proud of and I think are really cool. And then the rest of it is, it's kind of filler content, you know? There's just not enough time in the day to make something really cool every single day. It just doesn't happen. And I feel like the same exact thing happens in pretty much any other creative uh, field or creative endeavor that people have. Um, even if you're not maybe uh, doing something super creative, you probably have those goals to maybe, maybe do something cooler like that and it's just hard to get started, right? Um, it's hard to get started because it's, it, it's, you know, again, a lot of it comes down to time, right? Um, so looking at MCOC, that's how I felt for the past, uh, I don't know, maybe always <laughs> thinking back on it, but I felt it the most the past like year and a half or so where it just seems like, yeah, 
Kabam does really cool things from time to time, like the Summer of Pain and, you know, some of the champions that get released are really cool. But then there's also what feels like a lot of filler content where the, some of the champions don't really hit the mark, but they have to get the champions out on time. And some of the content is... It's just kind of whatever, you know what I mean? The side quests, sometimes there's a really cool side quest, like the little symbiote uh, buddy that we got. Or then sometimes there's a side quest to um, use a skill champion to end fights with medium attacks. Um, so it, it just feels like there's not enough time in the day for these developers. So uh, I, I, I felt... Like, I would have been a, a hypocrite if I, you know, was giving this kind of feedback, giving this kind of critiques, uh, and then not applying for this type of position, because I was trying to help in any way that I could. Um, so that that's really why I applied for the position. It wasn't um, anything to do with, like, rebalancing champions and stuff like that. And I know some people, because of how outspoken I've been against certain overpowered champs, like Quake, for example, you know, the, the the champion in a fighting game that doesn't actually make any sort of contact, that uh, doesn't care about um, either champion's armor or resistances or power gain or like 95% of the nodes in the game, you know, that champion that probably should be deleted from the game as, as she currently exists. Yeah, 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 I've been pretty outspoken about that character. And I know some of you are probably thinking, dude, you actually tried to get hired so that you could be the one to hit that delete button and remove Quake from the game, right? No, uh, not the case. Actually, it was quite the opposite. You see, there were there were two really big disclaimers. There's two big like deal breakers that um, uh, before I applied for the position, uh, I knew that I was going to bring up had I even you know gotten the opportunity uh, to get an interview, uh, and this was these were going to be. Like, like I said, deal breakers. If, if you know, Kabam wasn't okay with either one of these things, then, hey, uh, I, I wouldn't have been the person for the job. The first is that because of how outspoken I am uh, about these some of these overpowered champs and, and how I felt about them in the past and still feel about them, to be honest, I also couldn't be the person to, um, you know, nerf these characters, which it doesn't seem to be Kabam's goals anyway. Uh, someone in this post asked about, like, I mean, they mentioned Hercules. They don't say Quake, but um, the response that that Mike gives is uh, this does not affect older champions, but those coming starting in March. So this new program that they have in place, it, it seems like it's just for the newer champions anyway. It seems like that's what their goals are. But, you know, of course, um, you know, like I said, I, I literally in the interview process told Kabam, like, no, it, it can't be me. Uh, just because there's going to be a target on my head so fast <laughs> if, like, you know, Quake exists as she is all this time and then suddenly, um, you know, I get brought on board and then, boom, she's she's toast or something like that. I, it couldn't happen. Um, the second disclaimer that I had is that uh, I wasn't going to take the position behind you guys' backs. Um, yes, I applied for the position without telling you guys because I wanted to see if Kabam was even interested. Uh, but... I told them this in the interview process as well because of the unique position I'm in on YouTube. Um, and, and this is not something that, you know, I want to stop. Um, this was going to be like, in addition to like, I was going to do both things. Uh, you know, I, I it, it would not have been right for me to all these years be saying like, you know, I'm not a Kabam employee. Cause you know, you got those internet trolls who, um, I mean, I don't want to be too insulting, but I'm going to be a little bit insulting. When people, like, lack the the, the ability to, to critically think, um, like, that, that, oh, my goodness, wow, someone else has a different opinion. Like, they don't have the ability to understand that different opinions exist. Um, the, the only thing that they can say is, oh, you have that opinion because you're getting paid to have that opinion. Uh, you know what I mean? Which is absolutely not the case. Kabam has never given me a single dollar. The closest that it's ever come to that is when I went to New York to do the Summoner Showdown and I was reimbursed for travel expenses, but that reimbursement didn't even come from Kabam. That came directly from Marvel. 
Um, so even th even then, even though it was not a paid thing, even though it was just a reimbursement thing, uh, even then that came from Marvel. So yeah, Kabama's never given me a single dollar. Um, but I, I, you know, because I've been saying that for like, you know, almost six years now, it would have been wrong to be like, <laughs> JK, I actually do work for Kabam. You know, it just would not have been right. So I told them that, hey, if you guys do want to, to bring me on board, um, before I, you know, sign any sort of, uh, like, uh, employee agreement contract or whatever, um, I would put it out there on YouTube. Very odd situation, but I would actually make a video to see how you guys felt about it. Because the truth is, I owe you guys everything. I'm just some random dude that plays this game, man. There's nothing special about me. But for whatever reason, you guys, you know, like this channel. You guys like the videos I put out. Um, and as a result, it's changed my life. You know, for the better in, in so many different ways, dude. The, like the freedom that I feel now when I wake up in the morning, just throw on some tunes and sit down and say, hey, what do I feel like working on today? Dude, that wasn't something possible uh, only a few years ago. And it's not something I'm ever going to take for granted. So although it is a very odd situation, um, that was the stipulation. That was, you know, it, it would have been a deal breaker if I put it out to you guys and you said, hey, no, not really comfortable with that. Um, would prefer if you didn't work on the game and were just, you know, someone that, that kept making videos. I would have said, okay, cool. Um, that's fine by me, you know? Um, I really would have put it out there for you guys to, to kind of make that decision, you know, see how you guys felt. They seem to be okay with that idea, but uh, ultimately, we already know how the story ends uh, in that... Uh, you know, J. Nick was, was the person that got uh, hired, not me. Which, by the way, I, I'm not mad at at all. Really, I just wanted anyone with more experience in the game to be helping out. Um, and like I said, I, I felt like it would have been hypocritical of me to not uh, at least try to offer some kind of help. Um, I'm not saying I would have suddenly been able to, like, magically fix everything no absolutely not but it's it's just about improving the quality uh, of the champions being released it's about imp improving the quality of the content being released um you know uh the solo competitive mode even though that's not mentioned here it's mentioned you know it's mentioning alliance war tactics but the solo competitive mode you guys know i am uh like that's really like the only thing i care about in the game at the moment truly um so like you know i, I was psyched to uh you know maybe help out in, in in that area as much as i possibly could um so yeah I, I, as long as someone that is knowledgeable about the game is uh helping um and i'm not saying kabam doesn't already have people that are knowledgeable about the game i'm just saying they need more uh and jay nick as i mentioned when i originally talked about this post uh jay nick has experience in top 10 alliances you know, so he's got that experience. That that is going to be happening. Um, yeah, that is that's a go. So I think that's a really good thing overall. Uh, from like a selfish standpoint, um, it really didn't matter whether it was me or someone else because as long as the game is doing better, then my YouTube channel is doing better. So in a way, it's it's kind of better that it's not me because I get the benefits without having to do the work. <laughs> you know, but like I said, I just, I had to at least give it a try because, uh, um, you know, it's, it's no secret how I felt about the game recently. I haven't been, uh, too happy with the direction things have been going in. Uh, so, you know, had to at least try now, as far as the interviews themselves went, um, there were technically four different interviews in total. Um, three of which were with, you know, actual, uh, you know, the, the, the different designers, uh, in different, you know, categories, different, uh, job titles, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, working on MCOC. And I, oh man, I feel like I kind of bombed the interviews to be honest. Uh, I, I don't want to give excuses, but, um, you know, the, like the mornings, the morning of the interviews, I, I basically got home at 6 a.m., <laughs> you know? So, 
my brain was just it wasn't wasn't quite all there during the interview. Sadly, um, I don't know if that would have changed anything. Uh, you know, like I said, Janik already has like all this experience and stuff like that, uh, and I don't know exactly what kind of background he's had in his. Uh, you know, his personal life or, or his uh, work life or whatever. But um, I think it was a great pick. So I don't know if it would have changed anything. But yeah, I, I, I just wasn't really able to, to respond to the questions as well as I would have liked. So maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. Um, one thing that uh, I thought would have been cool if if I did get picked for, um, and something that I kind of failed to, uh, to mention to Kabam when they asked, like, um, you know, why you over someone else kind of thing is that, um, like I mentioned, I, I would not have stopped making videos or streaming. And I don't know any other game, at least any other game on the size of MCOC, where someone that's like an active member of the development team uh, would be streaming on like, you know, a daily basis, every single day, right? Like, of course, there's, you know, I mean, there's community managers that exist, so you can have, you know, um, kind of a back and forth uh, dialogue with 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 uh, the community manager, but it's tough in a in a medium like a forum, right? Um, so I think it would have been a lot cooler if there was someone part of the development team just kind of acting as this conduit for for feedback and. For you know, openly discussing different areas of the game, and even people who didn't you know like me as a content creator, they could they could still you know give me feedback, and I would have passed that along to the development team. Would not have like you know banned people from the channel for it. Um, I usually do like a yearly unbanning anyway. I would have just unbanned everybody so that they had access to the channel kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, and, and it, I just thought that would have been kind of cool. Um, because, you know, like I said, it, 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 as, as, you know, as nice as it is getting responses from the community managers in this way, it's not really like a like a face-to-face -face interaction. And there's no such thing on the internet, right? But at least in video form, at least in, in live stream form, it's, it, it's like as close as you can get. So it just would have been something uh, a little bit different than I've seen in any other game that I think would have ended up uh, being pretty cool. But I didn't get the position, which, like I said before, is totally cool with me. It's it's kind of better this way anyway. Someone else has to do the work now, and I can just kind of sit back and play the game and make videos. And yeah, that's totally cool with me. Um, you know, as far as like, would I ever apply for another position? Well, first off, I mean, I, I didn't think I was ever going to apply for any position at Kabam. Pretty sure if you look back to different streams or maybe even videos, I said exactly that. Like, no, I have no intentions of ever applying for a position at Kabam. Uh, at the time, it was the absolute truth. Um, if you think about it, like, logistically, it was just an impossibility. Uh, you know, I, in the past, I lived in New Jersey, which is, I don't know, like two, 3,000 miles away from uh, Vancouver, Canada, where Kabam is located. And even now, living in Seattle, Washington, it's still like a four-hour commute uh, one way over an international border. Can you imagine doing that twice a day? No, it's, it's not possible, right? Uh, but... Nobody could really could have predicted this global pandemic situation that we have, which has now opened up the possibility of remote work. Because um, that's the thing is like, uh, you know, uh, I it's kind of out of the question. It's still out of the question to move uh, to Canada. Seems like a great place. Would love to visit. Um, but my life is here. You know, my wife's career is here and there's other things keeping me here. So, uh, yeah, logistically, it was just never something possible so it's not like i was giving you know positive feedback on anything previously in hopes that you know kabam would would be like oh we like this person let's bring him on board no uh I, i've never felt any sort of need to kiss anybody's ass for any sort of reason this was something that kind of just popped up and was like well i mean i guess now it is possible since remote work is a thing okay i i, I guess i'll apply um, that's kind of how that went. Uh, and it's not going to change my opinions going forward. I'm sure there's going to be some people that are like, oh, now we can't trust this person. But I mean, the thing is guys, there's no, tr there's, there's like no actual benefit to giving feedback, to giving positive feedback on something that is bad. Like if I feel good about something, 
um, like I'm probably going to feel good about the upcoming, you know, relic system and uh, small scale PVP system because look at the date that I've made these videos. This is like, you know, September 2017 that I've been wanting these types of things. I've been wanting them, these types of things for that long. So yeah, when that stuff hits the game, I'm probably going to enjoy the hell out of it. But you know, just giving positive feedback about something that you don't think is good, you're not doing anybody any favors. You know what I mean? Uh, giving positive feedback about something like the gifting event um, when, you know, if you feel like it's a bad thing for the game, it's not doing anybody any favors. Uh, being honest is, is what it's all about pretty much. Um, so yeah, it, it, even if I got the, the, the job at Kabam, it would not have changed anything. Well, I mean, sort of, it would have changed something at that point because, you know, if you're, if you're actively working on a champion, uh, and, and you think that they suck, well, then you're going to tune them up before they get released, right? Like, for example, when I was helping to design I-Bomb with Kabam Broccoli, and the design goal was to have someone that can counter Dr. Doom, um, you know, Broccoli showed me an early version of the character that we had, you know, kind of collaborated on, and uh, he showed me I-Bomb, like, doing a duel against Doom, and it didn't look that convincing. <laughs> so, you know, my feedback was like, dude, I mean, this is not good. If he's a, if, if the champion is made to counter Dr. Doom, uh, he needs to be able to, to fairly comfortably be able to counter a Dr. Doom boss, like an Alliance War boss, you know? Um, so until that happens, well, then yeah, the, the, the champ's not ready. So if I did get hired, then I probably would have had more positive things to say. Um, only because, you know, I, I would have had a direct hand in helping to create that thing. But um, as far as it, as far as things go right now, now it's not going to change my opinion on the game uh, in a more positive way to try to kiss ass to uh, try to apply again or something like that. It's also not going to change my opinions in a more negative way because, uh, you know, seriously, no saltiness whatsoever about Janik and the position over me. Um, would I ever apply for another position? I, I don't know. I don't even know if Kabam would ever accept another application. Um, I kind of doubt it that, that I would apply um, just because, um, you know, when I mentioned I was out until 6 a.m. Uh, working on a project before doing the interviews, um, I was going to kind of sideline that project. This is something I've been working on for a while that uh, I didn't really want to sideline, but I just felt like, I, I have to try this. Why not? Um, but yeah, it, hopefully in the next few months, you'll see exactly what I've been working on. And I think it's something pretty cool that uh, will surprise some of you. And mm, I don't know, just be kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> for, even if it doesn't surprise you, I think it'll be kind of cool. But um, but yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I am very grateful for the opportunity that uh, Kabam even... Uh, allowed me to interview with them um, just because like I, I never know how these guys feel about me there's never going to be uh, there's never going to be a way to know how these guys truly feel about me because um, you know I, I, I it's kind of their job to be nice to the people making content about their game and of course there's things that I, I I'm sure I say about the game that uh, you know <laughs> make them go like oh f this guy you know what i mean uh but then when they when they see me face to face it's like oh hey how you doing good to see you, you know what i mean so like i i never know how they actually feel but the fact that they uh at least allowed me to uh you know apply and uh gave me an interview gave me a fair shot at it uh pretty grateful for that but um otherwise that's i mean that's pretty much it that's the full story um uh, back to uh, kind of business as usual, just a, uh, a content creator who is not being paid by Kabam. And if things ever change, well, you guys will be the first to know. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.